Um, so, so thanks again for uh, being able to speak uh, at this conference. Um, you might have seen that the synopsis for what I was supposed to be speaking on um, was rather grandiose in its title. Uh, and then um, I had to argue with uh, Angie about um, whether that was an appropriate title, but you know, a few people win arguments with NG, so we'll just leave it at that. Uh, today, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, something that Chris had, had just mentioned. Um, and uh, Chris uh, just opened the last hospital uh, in Singapore. We are opening the next hospital in Singapore. And our journeys have uh, actually brought us to very similar points. And, and as I present, you will hear some of the things that we are trying to do that really is uh, quite similar to what uh, Chris has been doing in Singkang. And it is, it is the entire conference today, you will hear many different things about what the individual can do to help himself cope and grow in situations such that he is better prepared for the future. Um, not as much is said actually about what is the role of the organization in helping the individuals uh, create the environment and the wellness and resilience. And what is the role of the organization when um, you are creating, trying to create a new organization? So we, I, I conceive that uh, this idea um, is that the, the organization needs to create an environment that is conducive for individuals to form relationships and trust. Okay? Uh, and we believe that if there is strong trust and good relationship between individuals in the organization, that we will then be able to um, have a more resilient workforce. Now, uh, last year, I also mentioned this, that this is the, the, the path in which we are, we've been taking to try and build uh, joy in work. And uh, the, the idea here are three main things, uh, the, the sharing uh, visions such that uh, we can find our common meaning and purpose in the work that we do, um, building trust and having psychological safety in the work environment, and making people more engaged in what they do so that there is a sense of participative management, meaning that they feel that they belong in the organization and that they would take extra effort to make sure that their, the part they play in the organization is a meaningful one. Um, and uh, we and last year I presented that there were a variety of things we did and some measures that, that we had that showed some success and not success in other things. Uh, but uh, we've also done uh, other things that uh, I will share with you today. The, the position that uh, the Woodlands Health Campus has been in its, in its development has been uh, somewhat strange in the sense that we have been, we do not have a campus of our own unlike uh, previous hospitals where they, there's a staging site, our hospital staff are essentially nested in a variety of places, in Tan Tok Seng, in Kutek Puat Hospital, um, but also with, uh, with Chris uh, Cheng's team in Sengkang Hospital, um, and also some in uh, um, uh, SGH and some in Ting Fong Hospital. So, so our teams are all over the place and we have the added challenge of how do we bring people together to share some common identity? So what we've done is that uh, we have uh, started a series of, of events uh, and this, uh, these things we call the Discovery Cafe. And you will see here that uh, in the pre-COVID days, these were done uh, face to face. But in the current COVID days, this you will see joy here. Uh, running the same sessions uh, on Zoom. Um, we have, there are four discovery cafes and the efforts that what we're trying to do is in the first uh, discovery cafe, we try to get people to understand themselves as observers, right? And it's the idea that as an observer, I wear different lenses and how is it and who am I when I see things in a certain way, right? And that's the first session. 
who am I and how do I shift myself as an observer? The second is building uh, um, understanding of the different types of people and the different ways people work with each other. The third is a very important one about building meaningful relationships. And here, the key question that we, we ask our staff is, do you engage in this relationship to be right or to do right? What's more important, being right or doing right together? And then the last one that we, we, uh, we do is about trust and uh, building uh, relationships uh, with this model of trust that we like to share. So I'll go a little bit more into the model of trust that we are using. Um, in creating trust, uh, the, the, we, used, we chose a very simple model. There are many models, but we chose a very simple model where we focus on what's in the head, what's in the heart, and what's in the gut. And when we say the head, uh, we essentially mean, are you competent? Are you reliable? Right? So, so to be trustworthy, number one, we must be competent and we must be reliable. If I am competent, I'm able to put my best in what I do. I help achieve the mission. Uh, if I'm reliable, I say what I, uh, I do what I say and people can count on me to keep my end of the bargain. At the heart level, the question is, are you sincere? Meaning that, will I be open and honest? And will I be accepting of people who are open and honest with me? And at the gut level, who am I? Do you care, right? So the question that we ask is, do you care? Are you able to care for somebody like me? On the ground, it means that I do not take advantage of other people, that I try and identify common ways that we can work together because we can support each other and grow together. So these are the sort of things that we've been trying to build even uh, before the hospital opens. Uh, and we, we sort of wanted to do this before we reach uh, the, the hospital opening. But of course, in COVID, we had to deal with something else uh, before this hospital could be ready. Uh, and we had to first deal with this, right? So this was a photo of uh, the Singapore Expo that I took uh, two days before we opened. Um, it was a time of crisis. We were asked to respond. And as an organization, uh, we felt that we did need to respond uh, to help uh, the rest of Singapore. Uh, we were uh, young and uh, inexperienced, but we had to pull together because we had some staff who uh, really were very experienced people uh, and, and to lead the way. So we had new challenges at that time. So on top of trying to build an organization, we now are in an environment where there's uncertainty, there are changes in the work environment, and we had to innovate to solve new problems. Uh, so here you have a, a, a photograph that has since gone uh, viral in the newspapers. Um, this was our staff who were in the halls uh, trying to do exercises with um, the, the, the patients in the hall. Um, our teams were still scattered all over the place. This was not the only place uh, you would find Woodlands staff. Uh, we, had, we still had people who were actively working in NCID, in Ku Teik Pot Hospital, in the EDs in Sengkang, while we were also at uh, the CCF Expo. Not to forget that we also had a large number of staff, admin staff, who were also working from home. Now, in a time of crisis, we often ask ourselves um, to do things that are different, we ask our staff to step up and take on new challenges, but in so doing, we actually need them to take new risk. And the question is, why would the staff take this risk? Um, and why should they, uh, because we ask them to go forward and, and, and do the things that, we, that, that uh, we require of them? And I put it to you that perhaps the most important thing that we need to create is a, a sense of trust between the staff and the organization. 
And I'm not saying this from the perspective that it was well planned. I, in fact, um, I am thinking about this uh, through reflection and I'm putting this down um, uh, to you. Um, it, is, it, it certainly wasn't uh, thought of at that point where we started doing all of this work. Um, we, I, I thought about how we teach our staff about trust and building trusting relationships. And I wondered what would that look like if the staff were to trust an organization from the head, the heart and the gut, what would it mean for the organization to win over the trust of the staff? Well, the first is, uh, is the Woodlands Health Campus, WHC, competent, right? So it's in the head, is it, are we competent in delivering on this mission? Now, if this was a Sengkang Hospital, if this was Ku Teikpat Hospital, if this was Tan Tok Seng Hospital or SGH, um, perhaps this question is, wouldn't be that uh, uh, pertinent. But we were a new, new organization. We hadn't run our own operations before. And of course, our staff would be asking us, uh, are we really competent to do this? And we needed to bend together to make this work to show our staff, to show our people that yes, we are competent. So in a space of five days, we organized ourselves. We got the first hall running. Uh, in, uh, in, in another five days, we opened up the second hall, the third hall, the fourth hall. And very soon, uh, we were running a, a very tight ship in uh, the expo. So we had to show our staff that we were competent. The next question is, um, reliability. Does WHC do what it says? And here is our compact with our staff. Our staff take the risk. We promise to look after them. And we have uh, put in place a variety of things that uh, we um, show and do to, to help our staff cope. And I'll show you some of these things in a short while. The third question is about, is uh, WHC open and honest with me? And lastly, does WHC really care about me? And so I'm going to show you what are some of the things we did. And, and hopefully, um, it does help answer these questions to our staff that they can really trust the organization to look after them. Um, so the first thing we did is in, in, in the midst of uh, the response, we had our human resource, our organizational development group, and our staff members come together to form a, a task force. And this task force uh, had a variety of things to, to put in place. And <clears throat> the most important basics were that actually our leaders needed resources to help their teams to continue to grow in a time of crisis. Uh, we needed to put in place welfare officers in every unit so that there were people that uh, peers could turn to and we needed to train these people just in time uh, because we didn't have a long runway to train people um, uh, in, in peacetime. Um, we needed all our staff to have basic occupational mental health uh, knowledge and also be able to identify red, red flags of distress. We wanted to open up a community of practice so that these people who were supporting other people could themselves get support from, from their peers. And finally, we needed our organizational development team to be immersed in the, in the workplace such that they could sense what was going on and they could then feedback on how we could improve. So here you will see a number of things that we put in place. On the left, there, is, there, there are a series of uh, things that we put in place. These uh, were posters that we printed. We had uh, um, electronic media. We have a, a, a Facebook uh, version for, for the workplace that we use uh, that, to disseminate information as well. And here is a, a bit about leading in times of COVID, right? So the first is how do you care for your team members and show the team members that they are very important to the mission? Um, how do we conduct check-ins, right? To make sure that our team members are coping well. What are the steps we take to communicate better? Are the clear instructions? Uh, we have a series of things for our clinicians who are at the front line, QR codes for them to access resources 
what, 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 do, what do you do when you need uh, to take a break? Uh, so here are QR codes for you to take um, to uh, apply for leave, for example. And then here you have a series of things um, about helping yourself, uh, being a friend to other people, and taking action uh, uh, to help yourself cope with um, the COVID situation. Um, we also had uh, a very interesting way that we wanted our leaders to uh, maintain in contact with the front, the front line. Uh, so you, this is an example of how we wanted our leaders to keep in touch with their teams on a daily basis. And, and um, a timely huddle at the beginning of each day for only 15 minutes uh, would have been, would suffice. Uh, we actually encourage them on a Friday to spend a bit longer to ask about uh, the social life of the individual and not to have anything to do with work. So, so this, in a way, was to help people to be able to recognize that it is not just work that's important, but it's also your other loved ones and how you're coping in society that mattered as well. We subsequently created a variety of uh, um, information packs that our staff could use. Uh, so these were things about how do you recognize and relieve stress? There are ways that you uh, relax and recharge. Uh, tips for ne uh, uh, navigating negative emotions. How do we look after ourselves? Sleep, food, water, exercise, social support. And uh, what is exactly the same as what uh, um, Chris was saying earlier, small reminders about being grateful. <clears throat> uh, being grateful for the little things uh, that we still have and uh, that we can count on. Um, we also had our communities of practice. So these are people from all over. Teresa here uh, was in uh, Expo. Uh, uh, Christine was in Sengkang, um, and uh, you know our staff were just all over the place. Uh, but uh, they got together online to form communities of practice of people supporting other people. So this is what uh, uh, the community of practice looked like. Um, we spoke to our staff about how they were coping, and this, these are the sort of things that we heard. Um, our clinical leaders, uh, they, they had a lot of difficulty uh, during, the, during the pandemic. Uh, primarily, it was because of the loss of uh, connection with other people. As much as you could Zoom, the lack of face-to-face uh, -face contact was really proving to be a problem. So we actually uh, needed to address that and, and to try and help them with tools in order that they could better conduct face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, sorry, uh, Zoom sessions and, and better um, uh, work with their teams. Um, there were also frustrations about things that uh, were supposed to happen during COVID, uh, but in COVID could not happen anymore. Uh, so these were training uh, events that had to be put on hold uh, or work that uh, what we would like to call business as usual type of work that we wanted to, uh, to do, but you can't because uh, you needed to deal with the COVID situation. And these were sort of frustrations that they were hearing. Um, we, they, we asked the, the heads, how did you cope? And a lot of them had formed uh, multiple ways of communicating with their teams. They ended up huddling with their teams on a more regular basis to check in with them. And that they actually took more time during their session, uh, the, the, the huddles to realign what uh, they were doing and making sure that everybody was on board. They provided uh, feedback channels, ensured that uh, there was continuous support uh, going on, and everybody was hoping for a return to the business as usual, but of course that will still be taking some time. We needed to introduce some new tools to our heads because uh, they may not have been uh, familiar with things like the Mentimeter uh, uh, and some of the other Zoom functions like the breakout rooms and the using of the whiteboard that we felt that they needed to learn uh, to be able to conduct these meetings better. We, we spoke to our team members who were in the expo and, and, and uh, uh, we sort of uh, looked at their responses and um, 
there were a few themes that came up from the, from the conversations with them. Uh, there was a lot, and, and I'll show you some of the, the, the comments later, but there was a lot that was said about the meaning and the purpose of the work that they were doing in the Expo. Um, they looked at this growth and improvement opportunity, which I thought was very interesting because in a time of crisis, they were actually seeing this as opportunity. Um, there was a lot that was discussed about building trust and relationships between uh, members of the team and uh, between different teams and strengthening the team uh, that they were in. So we were very happy to see these, these uh, themes come up in our, in our discussions with our, our uh, uh, members in the CCF, uh, particularly because they aligned very well with what we were trying to do uh, from day one. So here were the sort of things that they said. Um, the individuals, uh, uh, when we asked them about the, this experience in, this, in the CCF, uh, they said that this is rare, a valuable, once in a lifetime experience, an opportunity to do something outside your, your uh, usual work. It is uh, physically tiring, but they found it fulfilling. Um, they, they found that there were very good opportunities to work with other family members, other groups and agencies, um, there, there were things that they were doing on a regular, uh, on a planning basis that they couldn't actually see uh, in the workplace until something like that, where they could actually activate the work that they were doing. Uh, communication came up a lot and how do we uh, communicate in uh, stressful times? And that really was a point about how do we strengthen our teams. Um, but here's, here's, here are things that, that they talked about, the patient, right, and, and uh, the meaning and the purpose of the work that they, they did. Uh, they felt uh, empathy towards the patients. Uh, there were moments where they begin to doubt themselves. Uh, are the patients waiting too long? Uh, did we bring them into the wrong place? Uh, what if I made a mistake? There were all these anxieties born of interest to make sure that our patients received the best care that they could. They could. What do you learn about yourself and your team that was valuable? Um, there are some new skills that they, they learn on the job. Um, but here's one that I found was very interesting. They, the, the comment was that selflessness is a choice, not a given. That people choose selflessness. And I thought that that was a fantastic thing to have learned about uh, yourself and your team. Um, when they talked about the team, they, they uh, talked about uh, covering for each other, the hard work uh, and uh, reliability of their team members. Uh, they talked about being physically very tired. Uh, uh, people were clocking 35,000 steps in the expo in a single day. Uh, they couldn't feel their legs anymore, but they were, they were fulfilled with the work that they were doing. And when they looked at uh, working with other teams, then it came down to things like communication, which uh, could lead to unhappiness if it was not managed properly, and uh, a willingness to sort of ask questions and clarify and, and help each other out in a very tough situation. We then asked them, what would you take back from this experience to when we actually have to open the hospital for real? Um, and, and here are the sort of things that they, they felt were important having clear processes, uh, ability to speak up. So here was the idea of psychological safety that we're trying to drive home, to build trust such that um, you are able to speak up. And, and, and we were very happy to see that people wanted this and that they felt that this was something that was important to learn, uh, to bring through uh, at the point when we go back to work at, uh, in normal times. Um, then there were other things like clar clarifying their roles, being empathic towards each other, and these were important things uh, for them as well. We end off every exercise we do now with this thing called offers and requests. And, and uh, the idea behind offers and requests is that uh, there are certain things that you would like other people to do for you, but you were, we, and we encourage you to ask people for help. But we do not want people just to ask for help. We would like you to offer as well things that you could do for other people. Um, and this is uh, uh, what we put side by side as offers and requests um, 
as an individual for your organization. So here are things that people requested for in the, in the CCF, right? Not surprising. Uh, but then there were things that they offered as well. They offered a listening ear. They offered to be the one to go tapau lunch when you got sick of bento boxes. Uh, they offered uh, for, for uh, to be the one that people could approach uh, to be uh, when they needed help. So this is very nice for us to see that they were stepping forward and uh, uh, writing down their offers to the rest of the organization. So here's some of us uh, at uh, the CCF. Uh, this was National Day, and this is a, but a small part of the team. Uh, the most important few people are here. Um, this is Lei Hoon, she is our chief nurse and, and really she has been uh, the person pulling the entire nursing workforce together. This is Mohan, our uh, uh, deputy CMB who has been at the front line from day one uh, managing this crisis. And all of the work that I, I talk about here would not be possible if it's not for Yvonne. So this is Yvonne, who is a uh, director in charge of our organiz uh, organizational development. Glenn looks after all our IT needs and, and impossible to do the work without him. Uh, Kirk, our COO, uh, again, uh, behind every initiative that's available uh, in the CCF. And Sun Hua here uh, uh, looking after um, uh, corporate comms. The last slide um, is uh, some a photograph that I took, and this was on National Day in the CCF. And um, it was a very interesting uh, time for us. Um, people were saluting us and saying that uh, these are a bunch of heroes, but I, I can guarantee you that uh, there is no clinician who feels like a hero uh, in COVID um, because I, I think everybody takes it as a job that they have to do. And it is something that uh, we are proud to be part of. And uh, WHC is proud to be contributing our little part to this fight. So uh, thank you very much for listening to me and I'll be glad to take any questions you have.